Hi beautiful, welcome to my channel. In today's video we are going to try the brand new Laura Mercier Real Flawless Weightless Perfecting Foundation. This one just came out at Sephora. I did some more damage and then I also have a Sephora order coming tomorrow. So I'm going to do a Sephora haul with like a whole bunch of new at Sephora products tomorrow. But today we are focusing on the Laura Mercier Newness. And not only am I going to be trying this foundation, which I'm very excited about because there's been a few foundations coming out recently, but while I have been trying them and they have been working for my dry skin, they're not the type of foundation that I gravitate towards. And this one sounds more like the type of foundation that tends to become a favorite of mine. So I'm very excited about it because it's not a full coverage foundation. It's a medium buildable coverage foundation. Anyways, besides the Laura Mercier foundation, I also got a whole collection of Laura Mercier lipsticks, the high vibe lipsticks from Laura Mercier. And so I figured we would try all of the Laura Mercier newness in one video. I am beyond pumped to try this foundation. So let's just go ahead and get started. This new Laura Mercier Real Flawless Weightless Perfecting Foundation comes in the regular Laura Mercier usual box. If you're interested in looking at the ingredients, here they are on the side. The foundation has a 12 month shelf life and it is made in Italy. The actual foundation bottle is beautiful. Let me go ahead and show you. It's got a frosted glass bottle with this gold rim right here on the cap and a matte white cap. For some reason, I just really love the aesthetic of this bottle it is super super classy it says real flawless right over here on this side and of course it has a pump on the website it says it is a weightless foundation that blurs the line between makeup and skin with a medium buildable coverage, waterproof wear, and up to 12 hours of fade proof wear. It has a natural finish, a liquid texture of course. As highlighted ingredients it has high resolution pigments and 3D smoothing priming powders, perfecting cake free coverage and optimal color lay down with less product very exciting to hear and then it has blurring bamboo silk powders and hydro lipid matrix which balance moisture and shine control to maintain skin's optimal state that sounds fabulous besides that it's got camellia seed vitamin e and cocoa extra it's antioxidant rich formula helps defend against damage by external stressors so lots and lots of claim a foundation that seems like i would really be into it sometimes that fails me sometimes I start the videos very excited and then by the end I'm disappointed and I hope that that is not the case for this one because my hopes are up right now <laughs> I do already have my skin prepped because I went to Sephora to look for the foundation this morning um, and so the first thing I'm going to do is my primer this is the Gucci serum the Beauté primer and in yesterday's video when I reviewed the Gucci foundation I kept interchanging the words primer and serum because the primer's name is serum. And when I was editing that, I was so annoyed at myself. <laughs> so if anyone else was confused, I apologize. Anyways, this serum primer is fantastic and I really, really love it. So I'm going to put it underneath the Laura Mercier foundation. I also don't think I have any Laura Mercier primers that I love. I don't think I have any in my collection. Right now, I have had her primers in the past and, you know, nothing against them. They haven't been my favorite, but they've been okay. Um, but I just don't have any in my collection right now. I do, however, have Laura Mercier powder and blushes and stuff. And I'm super pumped to try all of these lipsticks. <laughs> the foundation shade I chose, which I haven't mentioned yet, is 2N1 Cashew. The other one I was very intrigued by was Soft Sand, which is more of a cooler tone, a bit more pink in it. But I went with 2N1 Cashew. So let me just put some right here on the back of my hand. It has a very liquidy consistency. I think the Soft Sand would probably have matched me better, but Summer is coming and at some point I'm going to look the color I like to look, which is this one here. <laughs> I don't want to get all of my new foundations in my pale version because I want to have foundations once summer gets here as well. Anyways, very liquidy foundation. I'm going to try it with a sponge on this side. And I'm just going to go for it. Oh, this feels like nothing on. So already love that. 
The color is actually not too dark, so I am liking that as well. And I did use both pumps on this side of my face to build it up to cover my redness a bit more. Okay, take a look right here. This is truly very, very skin-like, which I am liking, but it is not covering <laughs> my breakouts or pimples or allergy spots. I don't even know what those are that I have on this side of my face. I feel like I broke out from something I'm allergic to because they're not like, I don't even know why I'm breaking out right now. So most of my redness is covered, but if you have like active acne, that is a bit extra red, you might have to go on with maybe a bit of concealer or something to further cover that. For some reason, I'm only breaking out on this side of my face. This side seems to be okay. Weird, right? Anyways, the other side I'm going to use a brush for to see like the difference. And the brush I'm going to use is my it Cosmetics Love is the Foundation brush. I haven't used this one in a while. It picked up everything right away and I'm just going to dot it and blend it all over my face it's actually going on really nicely with the brush as well no streaks or anything it's blending right away if anyone is alarmed by the amount of pumps of foundation I'm putting on my face I promise you it's not that much product the foundation is extremely liquidy it sinks right into the skin and the little like splashes of foundation that are coming out of the pump are teeny tiny <laughs> So I'm going back on this side now with the brush because I did get more coverage with the brush and so I'm hoping it'll cover some of the redness right here, which I think is actually working really nicely. You know what foundation this reminds me of? Um, foundations that I love. <laughs> the Pat McGrath foundation. It's super liquidy just like the Pat McGrath foundation and you guys know Pat McGrath is my all-time favorite so I'm comparing it with like a really amazing foundation here. I'm very impressed so far. The texture and consistency of it is very, very similar to the Pat McGrath foundation. I think Pat McGrath might have a bit more coverage than this one right away, but this one maybe is a bit more natural looking. As far as like the radiance and the actual consistency of it though, it reminds me a lot of my all-time favorite foundation which is Pat McGrath. And I actually finished up applying it with the brush because I do think that I like a brush better for this one as I want to keep as much coverage as I can. And it's applying very, very like streak free, you know? Let me blend it down my neck a bit. So it is 135 foundation has been applied. This is the beginning of our wear test right here. Of course, I'm going to finish my makeup and show you up close and all of that, but the foundation is applied at 130. All right, so let me come closer. The lights are up right now, so you're seeing what everything looks like. As you can see, it's not as full coverage as the foundations I've been trying lately. You can see more freckles. You can see a bit more like pinkiness coming through, but at the same time, I kind of like this because it looks a lot more natural, a lot more skin-like. There's less emphasis on my pores right here. Like the pores are there because the pores are mine, I own them, but they're not as highlighted as with um, the Gucci foundation I tried yesterday. It also doesn't have as much coverage, don't get me wrong. The Gucci foundation I also really like, but like, you know, different foundation for different occasions might be a good thing. <laughs> Anyways, this is what it looks like up close with the light up and I'm going to lower the light and show you with the light down. See, very natural looking, but you can see a lot of my skin's imperfection underneath it still. So it really depends on like what level of coverage you are most interested in. In fact, let me show you the part where I'm having the breakout so you can see the part that might not look as pretty as well. So here's with the light down. With that said though, I feel like now that I'm going to do concealer and set everything with powder and all of that, this is just going to hopefully get better and better and better because this is a really good base to start with. So let's keep going. <laughs> I'm going to use my Charlotte Tilbury color corrector first right underneath my eye. The shade of this one is medium. And since I have it right in front of me and I've been actually really liking it, I'm going to use the... Moira Cosmetics concealer again because why not? It's really nice. I'm going to put some on my eyelid and the center of my face. And then just blend it in with my sponge. Take a look right here after the concealer and color corrector are blended, how everything is looking. I feel like the concealer, because it goes near the part where I have a bit more redness, kind of like helps with the coverage right there a bit. So that's definitely a plus. And I'm going to set everything 
with my favorite loose translucent powder, which is from Laura Mercier. And it is the Tone Up Rose Setting Powder. I am obsessed with this one. So with my Wayne number no. 3 brush, which I always have linked down below, by the way, if you're ever curious. I love this brush. It's expensive, but it is so perfect for the under eye area. Anyways, with my Wayne number no. 3, I'm just going to powder underneath my eyes next to my nose right here a bit and in the center of my forehead and this powder is taking some of the shine away right here in the center of the face i don't think i have any laura mercier bronzer in my collection so i'm going to use the tarte sculpt tape because i love this one and i'm just going to dot it right here on my face oh shit, that was a lot okay i think i might have squeezed a little bit too much out we'll see <laughs> so i'm going to start blending it with my BK 109 yes I learned the number <laughs> BK 109 brush okay maybe we'll be fine maybe this wasn't too too much this is the side I'm worried about here I dab my brush on a clean paper towel to take some of the excess off there's a tip for you because I'd rather do that than to try and blend excess product on my face so I feel like this is working now and let's do the jawline and the nose which I'm just blending up to the brow. Okay, I'm going over everything with the sponge to soften any areas that I don't want looking harsh. So here's that hard bronzer fully blended. The sponge definitely helped a lot to soften things. And I'm going to use the La Mercier Tinted Blush in the shade Southbound. So I'm going to just Put some right here on the back of my hand. This is my preferred method of application. And from the back of my hand with a stippling brush, this one is from Kaleidos. I'm going to work it onto my cheeks. So I'm just really getting the blush in the brush and then I'm going to start tapping it on both cheekbones. And I found that this is the way that it looks the most natural and my favorite way to use this liquid blush. Okay, so take a look right here at how things are looking. I'm really loving the way my complexion looks today because this looks very, very natural. So I'm going to do something on my eyes, not sure what, something neutral so that I can come back and try all of these new La Mercier lipsticks for you. I'm back, I did my eye makeup. Once again, I used the Sea Talk palette because I'm obsessed and yesterday I posted a reel over on my Instagram and someone said, can you do a neutral, more natural look with that palette and so, here it is, I'm going to edit it and again post it over on my Instagram today or tomorrow. Plus, I wanted to do a more neutral look anyways because I want to try all of these new La Mercier lipsticks that were sent my way. They sent over a little tin with a bunch of different colors. These are called the High Vibe lipsticks and I was looking up while I was doing my eye makeup and it turns out that these are not available at Sephora yet. So I'll let you know once they are, but they are already available I think on the Laura Mercier website. So I will have them linked down below in the description box of this video if you are interested in getting them. Take a look at what the packaging looks like right here. It has this rose gold shiny packaging and once you open it, here is what they look like. So I'm just going to go through them in no specific order. This one is called Love and I'm just going to put it on. No lip liner. We'll see. <laughs> Super creamy and extremely pigmented. So take a look right here. This one is the color Love. Next, we have the color Rush, which is a very, very vibrant, um, warm red type of color. I don't think I've ever worn a lipstick quite this shade, so this one's a bit shocking for me. <laughs> I feel like if you're blonde, though, you would look absolutely incredible with a lipstick like this one. This next shade is called Bliss, and it's worth mentioning, these feel like you're putting lip balms on. They feel like the Juicy Lips from Tarte, except they have a lot more pigmentation than those, and they are a bit less glossy, but still kind of shiny. I really love this formula. This next one is called Blaze. And take a look right here at what Blaze looks like. By the way, I don't know if you noticed, but I'm not using a lip liner for any of these, so they are so pigmented that you can very easily kind of trace the outline of your lips with them. You definitely don't need a lip liner for these if you don't want to use one. So take one last look at Blaze. This one is called Click. Mm, I love colors like this one. Take a look right here. This one actually matches my eye look really nicely, I think. Another warm shade. This one is called Glow. 
Glow is actually really pretty. I wasn't expecting to like it the way I do. Take a look right here. Three more colors to go. This one is called Snap. Ooh, I love me a cool toned shade. I love this one. This one looks really good. Then we have Dash. Another red. This one is a bit more neutral rather than warm, which I really like. And I left the nude shade for last because you guys know I love me a nude lipstick. So this one is called Joy. And it is a warm nude, so we'll see. <laughs> I would definitely prefer a lip liner with this one. But here it is without a lip liner. And I don't know if I love how like metallic it looks. But this is Joy. And I'm putting Joy on top of a lip liner. See if I like it better this way. Definitely better. However, again, the metallic finish, not something that I love. <laughs> Before we get back to the foundation, I'm going to tell you my final thoughts on the lipsticks after having tried them all. I think the formula is fantastic, the pigmentation is superb, the glide on these is amazing and they feel like you're wearing lip balm. So texture wise, formula wise, I love them, but for some reason though, I am just not the biggest fan of the color selection of these. Let me know if you guys liked any of them on me. Sometimes I edit the video later and I'm like, oh my god, this and that lipstick looked really good. But in the moment when I'm looking at it, I'm not seeing it. <laughs> so the color selection, I just wish I had more colors that I loved in here. However, formula-wise, 10 out of 10. <laughs> All right, now going back to the foundation because I can already do kind of my first check-in. I've been filming for a while. It is 2.49. It's been more than an hour. The foundation is fully set now. I did sprinkle a little bit of eyeshadow over it earlier, but that's okay. Not a big deal. The foundation is looking very, very natural, just like it did at first. It hasn't gotten oily or anything, and it also, most importantly for me, has not gotten dry. <laughs> So still loving it, very, very natural, and I will check in with you guys a little bit later to see how things are looking throughout the day. I totally got lost. I spent the day editing downstairs. I am sorry. It is... 9.51. I have had no touch-ups at all. I didn't even take the glitter off of my under eyes because I didn't want to touch up the foundation. That's how serious I was about it. Because it is a more natural looking, thinner foundation and so I didn't want to like disrupt anything. Nothing has been touched up. I am going to touch up now if I need to though to see how it would look afterwards. But as you can see, um, the foundation is still looking really nice, very natural. All of the makeup I put on top, I think looks pretty much the same. And the only difference that I can tell from when I first put it on to now is that I have gotten a little bit shiny, especially right here next to my nose. Forehead is a bit shiny as well. But besides that, I think it looks really nice. It hasn't peeled off. There's no blotchiness. I don't think the color changed. The coverage hasn't gone away anywhere. It looks medium coverage, just like it did much earlier today. It did not get dry at all throughout the day. If anything, it just became a bit more glowy. But my dry skin thanks it. <laughs> so yeah, if you're looking for a new foundation that has a very, very natural look to it, that feels undetectable on the skin, that is very thin, that sinks right in, that blends like an absolute dream and lasts for quite a while, I would actually totally recommend this one. I really, really liked it. Let me touch up just for fun. I'm about to wash my makeup off, but I'll touch up for fun <laughs> with a bit more of my Laura Mercier Rose Tone Up translucent powder situation. I'm going to dust it off on the cap right here and touch up right here. Magic. That looks so good immediately. Take a look at that, how nice and matte that looks and how it made my pores disappear. Because the pores are only showing up right now a little bit because they are a bit glowy looking from my natural oils, we'll call them, coming through. Not that I have many of those. Now, if you have oily skin, I don't think this is going to be the foundation for you. If you have oily skin, I probably wouldn't do it because I do see this one as a foundation that could get very glowy on an oily complexion throughout the day. So if you're oily, I wouldn't do it. But if you have dry skin like mine, if you have normal skin combination, I'm not sure, but normal to dry, Yes. Normal to dry? This is a definite yes. So take a look after nine hours at how good this foundation still looks. This is definitely 
my type of foundation. I love a very natural look. Unfortunately, my face was a bit redder today than usual, but if my redness is even more under control, I feel like I would like it even more. Very happy with this one. I'm gonna give it a 10. I gave the Gucci one a 9.5. This one, this one right here is a 10. I highly recommend it. Keep in mind, it is very thin, very natural looking. So don't expect a full coverage foundation. This is medium coverage. You can build it up a bit, but medium coverage a natural finish and the most skin-like look so yes 10 out of 10 for me definitely the type of foundation that i like and i highly recommend it if you guys like this video don't forget to please give it a thumbs up before you leave remember that everything that i talk about in every video is always listed and linked down below in the description box so if you are interested in shopping for this foundation which i highly recommend please shop using my link in the description box i love you guys so so much thank you for watching today's video and i hope to see you back in the next one <laughs> bye